life in prison and the state did not pursue the death penalty due to her gender. She was never charged with the other deaths. She died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Pen in 1965. During the course of her genealogical research, they, there's been some research across many people, some notorious for acts of bravery and the unlawful deeds, and that was just plain out like her, like us. Normal, right? Um, dang it, I'm addicted to true crime, so I don't know what's exactly normal, but... Welcome back to Season 4 of the True Crime Lounge Podcast. We are currently on Season 4, Episode 6. Um, and our theme for this season is Alabama Murderers. Um, before I get started, I do have a Patreon that you can join for early access to episodes such as this scheduled to come out. I also have a, true, a merch shop for all your true crime gear. And for any updates on my channel or podcast, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. With that being said, we dive into today's episode, shall we? Today, we are going to be talking about Nanny Doss, a.k.a. Nancy Hazel. And on the outside, we see Nanny Doss as this of Tulsa, Oklahoma. She was very friendly, happy neighbor, wife, and parent. On the inside, there was something cold lurking, and she nearly wiped out an entire family single-handedly. Her, <clears throat> her first victims were her own children. Her first husband, George Frazier, who arrived home in the nineteen twenty, arrived home in nineteen twenty, found his kids lying in the kitchen dead. Doss claimed, <laughs> um, excuse me, that he had been accidental. Poisoning, but evidently Frazier was not convinced. So, relatives <coughs> and her husband continue to die of, quote, stomach problems, unquote, and such aliens, aliens until Doss's fifth husband, Samuel Doss, suddenly passed away, and the doctor of this case was not as gullible as the previous ones, and evidently he did not take Doss at her word. He ordered an autopsy to be done, which revealed a massive doses of arsenic in the man's system. The bodies of Doss's husbands, relatives, and children were exhumed and tested, and it was found that her two infant children, four of her husbands, two of her sisters, her mom, and her nephew had already been killed by arsenic poisoning. Armed with information, police soon convinced a the soon convinced the poison um was the prison soon convinced the poisoner to confess that she went and she was sentenced to life in prison in 1964. She would die of leukemia the following year. Um, sorry, that was my word trying to get my schedule um situated because I do work two jobs. But, um, she would finally confess to the murders in October of 1954 when her fifth husband, who had died in the ho small hospital in Tulsa, in all, she revealed, she's revealed to have killed four husbands, two children, but her states, her mom, and her grandson, and a nephew. Now, I do have to go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, since it is summer, I am going to be taking some breaks in between. So these, like I said, these episodes are scheduled to come out. I am making sure these will be released. Um, but just wanted to get that out of the way. So if it's few and far between, I'm sorry, but I want to at least make sure I get season four finished. Now back to this episode, shall we? She was born in Blue Mountain, Alabama, 
as Nancy Hazel to James and Lou Hazel. Nanny, one, was she was one of five children. She had a brother who passed and three sisters, and both Nanny and her mom hated James, who was also strict, often controlling, and controlling father and her husband with a nasty streak. And there is evidence that Doss conceit was conceived illegitimately. As, the, as James and Lou married after 1905, they record they records also show that in 1905. She and her mom were living on their own. Her childhood was not happy. And she was a poor student who never learned to read well. Her education was erratic because her father forced her children to work on a farm instead of attending school. And when she was around seven and the family had taken a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama. And when the train stopped suddenly, Nanny hit her head on the metal ridge bar and the seat on the seat in front front of her life. Four years after she suffered severe headaches, blackouts, and depression. She also blamed Doe's, uh, these of her mental instability, on the accident. And during her childhood, her favorite hobby was reading her mom's romance magazines and dreaming of her own future romance romances. Later, her favorite part of the Lonely Hearts was the Lonely Hearts column, and the Hazel sisters' teenage years were very restricted by their father. He forbade them to wear makeup and attractive clothing. He was also trying to prevent them from being molested by men, which happened on several occasions. He also forbade them to go to dances and other social events. Let's talk about our first marriage now. She was married at the age of 16 to a Charlie Braggs. They had met in Lennon Thread Factory, where they both worked. And the father's approval, they married after dating for just four months. He was the only son of an unmarried woman and who insisted on living with them. And Doss later wrote that she married as her father wished in 1921 to a boy who only knew she only knew for about four or five months and had no family. Only a mom who was unwed and who had taken over her life completely. Now, Braggs' mom began um, to take take up a lot of his attention. Um, and she often prevented Nanny from doing things she wanted to do. The marriage produced four daughters over a four-year period of 1923-1927. Under a lot of stress, she started drinking and casually smoking. Became very a very heavy addiction. The marriage was an unhappy one, of course. Um, and both were suspect, suspected each other correct, other um, correctly of infidelity. Braggs often disposed uh, for disappeared for days. In early 1927, the two lost their middle daughters of suspected food poisoning. Suspecting that she had killed him, he fled from her, and taking the eldest daughter Melvina with him, and leaving newborn Florine behind her. And very interesting names, might I add. Um, his mom also died around this time, and Doss took a job at a cotton mill to support Florine and herself. Braggs returned home in nineteen returned in the nineteen nineteen twenty eight, where him and Melvina were also, and also was another woman. Saw him with another woman, a divorcee with her own child, and Bragg soon divorced, and she returned to her mom's home taking her two daughters with her. He always maintained that he left because he was frightened of her. Very interesting. Now let's talk about her second marriage. While living and working in Aniston, Doss soothed her loneliness by reading true romance and other such and other such as reading matter. She also resumed poring over the Lonely Hearts column and wrote to men av- advertising her. This particular advert that interested her was that of Robert Frank Harrelson, a 23-year-old factory worker from Jacksonville. He also wants, he sent her romantic poetry. She sent him a cake. They met and married in 1929, and she was married with she, when she was 24, two years divorced from Bragg, and they lived in Jacksonville. 
with Dawes' two daughters, a few months she discovered that she was an, he was an alcoholic, had a criminal record for assault, and despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. Let's talk about her grandchildren now. Um, Melvina, Doss's oldest pal, gave birth to Robert Lee Hines in 1943. Doss came to help after a painful few hours. A baby boy was born, but he died soon after. Melvina was exhausted from labor and soggy. And though she saw Doss stuck in a hat pin into the baby's head and later told Mo Mo Mossy and Florine, they told her nanny what said that the, ba the baby was dead. And they noticed she was holding a pen. However, the doctors could not come up with an explanation for the death. After this, Melvina and Movi drifted apart and Melvina began to date a soldier. Doss disproved to him and while Melvina was visiting her father after a particular nasty fight with Doss, her son Robert died mysteriously under her care on July 7, 1945. The cause of her death was diagnosed as asphyxia from the unknown causes, and two months later, she collected $500 insurance, life insurance <clears throat> that she had taken out on Robert. How's this not investigated? Let's talk about the death of Frank now. Remember, her husband? Um, in 1945, Japan surrendered. We all know, in 1945, World War II was going on. Japan surrendered. Um, and all that, and then we dropped those two massive bombs over Japan, which I just learned some some more interesting facts about that. I, I'm a World War II history nut. Back to the case, however. Um, and Harrelson Doss' second husband was one of the many people who celebrated rather robustly. And after an evening of particularly heavy drinking, he would rape Doss. The following day, she was tending to her rose garden, and she discovered Harrelson's corn whiskey jar. Buried in the ground, and the rape had been the last straw for her. So she took the jar, topped it off with rat poisoning, and Harrison died a painful death that evening. Now, let's talk about her third marriage. She would go on to meet her third husband in Lexington, North Carolina. He was Arlene Lanning, and she married him within three years. And the meeting with him was thought to be another Lonely Hearts column. L Lanning was in many ways like his predecessor, Harrelson, and he won he was an alcoholic. He was a Romanizer. And in this marriage, it was Doss who disappeared for months on the end. And she was home at when she was home. However, she played the doting housewife when her husband died. And what was said to be her heart failure was well, a heart failure. The whole town tuned in for the funeral and support that year. Afterward, the cup, the house, the couple lived in burned to the ground and had been left to Lanning's sister, and had survived and was get going going to, to her. As it happened, the insurance money went to Doss and quickly banked it. She soon left North Carolina, but only after Lanning's. Elderly mom died in her sleep. She ended up at her sister Dovey's house, and Dovey was bedridden and soon soon after Doss's arrival. This will lead to her fourth marriage now. Um, Doss had joined the Diamond Circle Club looking for another husband. She had met Richard Merton in Euphoria, Kansas, while she had while she had disappeared. And had a drinking problem. As many of his predecessors. Who's also. Surprise surprise. Was a womanizer. Before she could poison him. She ended up poisoning her mom. Louisa. On January 1953. When she came to live with him. And Morton met his daughter. Three months later. Met his death. Three months later. This would lead to her. Not once, but if you've been keeping up, her fifth marriage. Doss would meet and marry Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Tulsa Oklahoma in June of 1953. A clean-cut, church-going man. He disproved of his right of the romance novels and stories that she adored. And in September, Samuel was admitted to the hospital for flu-like symptoms. 
the hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract, and he was treated and released October 5th. Nanny killed him that evening and rushed to collect her life insurance, his policies that she had taken out on him. The sudden death alerted the doctor and who ordered an autopsy. And the autopsy will reveal, would you like to guess, a huge, surprise, a huge amount of arsenic in the system. Now, I know there's this whole thing about arsenic, like how it was used to treat cancer and a lot of that. Come on now. Why? Did not, no one not want to think to catch on to this? But let's talk about her conviction. Nanny confessed to killing four of her husbands, her mom, her sister, her grandson, and her t- mother-in-law. Um, the state of Oklahoma centered this case only on Samuel Doss. The prosecution found her mentally fit for trial, and she pled guilty on May 17, 1955. She was sentenced to life in prison, and the state did not pursue the death penalty due to her gender. She was never charged with the other deaths. She died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Pen in 1965. During the course of her genealogical research, they, there's been some research across many people, some notorious for acts of bravery and the unlawful deeds, and... That was just plain out like her, like us. Normal, right? Um, dang it, I'm addicted to true crime, so I don't know what's exactly normal. But um Nanny Doss was one of those people who whose deeds will forever be recorded in history. However, cold and metallicus, they have they may have been how could this pretty romantic and very soft voiced woman still be the Perfect love lead in incredible saga murders by poisoning by poison over 28 years, leaving a trail of victims halfway across the country before arousing suspicion. This is a very this this is still a puzzle is still felt unsolved by authorities. She was arrested in 1954 for murder and murder by poison, and her present husband. Um, is possibly the murder of one of her victims. The investigators had no idea what a uh, web, um, the idea of web that they could was woven from the Black Widow. She was called a Jolly Widow by many for her cheerful disposition. Her last victim was the unfortunate Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Sam and Nanny were married July 1954 in Tulsa. Shortly after that, he became ill, a trip to the hospital, and his condition condition was made worse. Um, And after several weeks of investigation to the death of Doss, Oklahoma police had enough evidence to arrest her for the murder of possibly another, Doss and another possible person. Nanny faced the interrogators equimenically, on November 26, 1954, when she was arrested, and she laughed at the accusation, saying, My conscience is clear. I married these men because I love them. And she would tell detectives that I have never poisoned anybody. That she read a love story magazines and that her favorite television programs were Art of Armor, since she favored the sophisticated sound of the word. I'm sure I'll find my perfect mate yet, is what she told the police officers. Although, that night into the early morning, these two men, the, there were two teens, detectives questioned the Jolly Widow, um, discovered these inner girls, and they removed her hung, horn-rimmed glasses, stating that I'm not, I'm not near or far-sighted. She just explained to him shortly, I have terrible headaches in my life, and rather, rather than from the time of seven, I went from a train, I, this went when the train hit me, and I was riding in, and I was thrown out. The smiling suspect never once lost her composure, and we're out, and we're out four teams before they gave up that night. When the officers took hours, <clears throat> took when the officers took a few hours for a grateful rest, 
a new force entered the bill aside from the battle. Newspapers and wire services spread the word that Nanny Dawes was being questioned for at least one po- at least one and possibly two deaths caused by poisoning. By sunrise, the Oklahoma police phoned um, um join was joined off the hook and more evidence was pouring into the second tape second against Nanny. Stories of other men that Nanny had married to who had met their own family deaths, the deaths of her sister while in her care, the mysterious death of two of her young daughters, and even the death of her own mom was being questioned. Okay, does anybody know the Pam Huff case? Does it it's just not like ringing a bell? Like, if it's not, like, oh my gosh, this is what's kind of reminding me of right here, right now. <laughs> but yeah. Apparently saying anyone or anyone who annoyed arsenic nanny <laughs> was sure to have a death warrant signed with their name on it. Once again, the interrogation began and the investigation investigators were armed with evidence. Sometimes during the next seven hours, she faltered in the times of a self-conscious giggle and small omission. Like, I lied about that. After last weekend... After that, she weakened, she weakened and admitted that she had poisoned Sam Doss. He had began to annoy her shortly after the marriage, and she started feeling sorry for him. Wait, sorry for him? When she would have to... And she's like, I didn't know what I was getting into. Some of the little things he annoyed her with, as giving time to go to bed at dark, and he wouldn't let her have television on. Or the radio on, even the fan on. She quoted Doss saying, I've been with a Christian man my whole life. And you're going to be a Christian woman. You need a radio and television. You don't need a radio and television. This quote got on her nerves, unquote. So bad that she had to put a pinch of rat poisoning in his coffee. She apparently overestimated the dose, causing him to retch and so violently save him save his life. Afterwards, it was she was nursing him back to health and reportedly stated hmm, that he had been mean as ever. Again, he poisoned his food that day he died. And after her confession, the investigator has been taking the lead of extraordinary woman like a clock running backwards over her trail for murders and she would admit to a chilling crime um, in the back of her mind detail, her final words to Doss was, Now my conscience is clear. She claimed that she met husband number four to Richard Merton in Birmingham, Alabama at a bus station. Merton was 69, a native of Euphoria, Euphoria Kansas. After a long period of questioning, she admitted to having poisoned him in 1953. Her reasoning for the death, he had made me mad for shining up mad shining up to another woman. Maybe just don't be seen. Have we thought about that? Um, after she signed the confession, she, once again, stating her conscience is clear. The expecting officers were disappointed when the floodgates of Nanny's soul did not open up. Without rancor, rancor she continued to verbally fence the investigators until they trapped her with new confession. They brought out one of the confessions of murder husband number three, Ori Lanning, who was a res- resident of Lexington, North Carolina. Who, who, remember, if you've been keeping up with this um crazy a whole Kardashian love mess um Pam Huff situation, who was married in 1952. He brow her brow was darkened with one of the frequent frowns, and when she would call to pro- the provocation that led to her. Um, the marriage was the longest of all. First of all, he crossed the line in 1952. He was a womanizer, and he stayed. He was staying running with an- another woman. Shortly after confessing to the murder of Lanning with poison, and then once again, how did she end it? My conscience is clear. The investigators gently led her to discussion of Frank Harrelson, who, which husband was he? If you've been paying attention. Number three, if you can't see, if you're listening, I'm pointing out three fingers. Um, 
His murder would be her first so far in present admission, and she claims they were married in 1937 in Jacksonville, Alabama. Um, but Harrison's brother claimed that they were married in 1945. Now, the year that Harold's uh, the year of Harrelson's death, Nanny stated that she married him for love, but she was but that was a disappointment. She found out he was a Gerald bird and a drunkard, and she enlightened the story on how one Sunday he was at his she she was at her mom's and Frank's brother showed up and saying that Frank wanted to see me. Frank had been out all night before drinking, and she was on the uh. She went with her, his brother to the edge of town, where he found him passed away, passed out from too much to drink. So it was after driving home and helping him inside that she says he wanted to go to bed with me, go to bed with him, and I refused. Um, the next morning, the bottle was um empty. And the investigators were going to ask her, how's your conscience now? How do you think she responded? Clear. Uh, so no amount of, pro- of prodding can evoke confessions, more confessions. And she will go on to say, you can, you can dig up all the graves in the world you want to, and you won't get anything more from me. All the exclamation of the more bodies and that the deaths of poisoning, no more confessions was forthcoming. Returning Nanny to the time when she was a wild and pretty girl at the home of 15 in her hometown of Blue Mountain, Alabama. Um, is where she would meet Charlie Braggs, and it was apparent that she may have included children in her lethal activities. Braggs was, quote, the one that got away, unquote. And unfortunately, not before or during his do- young daughter's died in series, but he stated that she was always running off with the man and the other he divorced her and sta- escapades as she returned home to bring in another man with her. The only statement from Nanny was that Braggs was she was forced to leave him because he was running with an- another woman, other women. Braggs was afraid of Nanny, as was his family. He never ate anything that she was prepared, and he was always in a foul mood. After all was said and done, she appeared as fresh as a daisy, laughing an outlying meal com- complex and com- coffee that she would like to prepare. When she, when asked what they thought that they should do with the poisoning for all her people, her answer was. Why anything like that? Uh, anything they do is perfectly all right with me. Four confessed murders, and at least eight of them were still under investigation, was all that they could get Nanny to commit to these hideous crimes. And at some, some of her own children and her grandchildren, her sisters, and even her mom. Possibly her dad. Did she commit more crimes? After all these years, we may never know. They all, but here's the thing. The only person that knows the truth is God and her. Even if she, if she ever made it to heaven, but I'm not one to judge. Unless you put pineapples on your pizza, then you open yourself up to judgment. Um, we know that the case continued on, even more when they had fallen prey on her. Before Doss died, she was corresponding with a former in North Carolina, for whom she baked a cake with and mailed to him, and he was anxiously waiting when they would meet. There was even a period un- unaccounted for in her life where it was believed that she lived in New York and Idaho, possibly married a man named Hendrix. Did he fall prey to her temperament as well? Was it a head injury as a small child due to her Due to the time and error, the possibly lacked the medical attention that could have caused her not to be so murderous. Although her education is believed not to have been reached past sixth grade, she has probably never read the pouring letter. 
Yet she unearthly, unearthly executed a bold psychology napkin to tame a story. She is believed so openly to have such guiltlessness that she was questioned for more victims around the time of the winter snow. We are not account now. Let's talk about the giggling grandma. She was dubbed a popular mess as the time of the giggling grandma, arsenic, and and loved as the most pulp magazine of true romance, and she spent most of her time searching for the real reason of life. However, when Nanny didn't find lo the love affair she was seeking, she had a very strange way of ending it. Or we could all do the raw thing and go, I didn't want a third divorce. Um, thank you, Kylie, my roommate's dog. Um, but, um, Nanny enjoyed killing, and it didn't matter who the victim was. But Nancy, born Nancy Hazel, and known the popu popularity by her mind for Nanny, she was linked to many murders. Um, she had a successful 30 year spree from state to state and finally being brought to justice. All right, that's it for today's episode. I will see y'all next time. Y'all have a great day. And if you kept up with me, I will be talking about Bobby Frank Cherry on this our next episode. If you know him, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, I'll see y'all later.